continuing with our talk about uh, the theory of karma. Today, we talk about uh, Nishkam karma as written on the screen with the diacritical marks. The dot below S makes it a sh sure and uh, the line above A makes it a longer pronunciation of A of A as A. So, it is called Nishkam karma. Now, Nishkam karma is something that perhaps uh, uh, most of us have uh, heard uh, in our day to day talks, if you have been raised in the Indian uh, cultural milieu. And uh, um, this, this is interesting, uh, both as an ethical theory and as a uh, uh, religious doctrine, that uh, uh, how uh, uh, what is prevalent as, as a means of belief, uh, as Nishkam Karma or as a religious doctrine is also a very uh, uh, potent philosophical uh, ethical theory. Uh, which in a way also contrasts with what is uh, the uh, practice today. Now, uh, to uh, many, many uh, people uh, would read a Nishkam Karma as having a fundamental con conflict with what is uh, the, the basis of uh, uh, the economic system today or the financial system today. The very fact that our uh, desireless or in incentive less actions possible. Now, uh, perhaps the most preliminary understanding of Nishkam Karma would be that well, um, actions are uh, 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 ought to be done without any incentives or detached or uh, actions or actions without any attachment. And now, contrasted with the current scenario that we are in, uh, perhaps most of us would be working for a living or would be uh, doing something for a living and that something, be it a profession, be it a uh, entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial uh, venture, may not be something that we enjoy from end to end. We are perhaps doing it to uh, attain something, to attain our livelihood, to attain our comfort, to attain our luxury. So, the very fundamental uh, 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 backbone of the today's, today's financial and economic world order seems to be that, well, every action should uh, 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 be incentivized, whereas every uh, 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 action that needs to be discouraged should be punished. Now, let us uh, look at it this way. Uh, th th I would like this to be as a contemporary introduction to the uh, philosophy of Nishkam Karma, uh, that uh, why do we have this notion of fines? Uh, fines as in, if you, if you uh, are late for a due payment, you are asked to pay a fine. And if you pay it on time, uh, sometimes you are given a 2 percent or a 5 percent discount on the next bill. Now, what are these? Very elementary, we come across th th this in various forms. Uh, you buy in bulk, you get uh, some discount. You buy uh, uh, in a staggered fashion, you are made to pay a little extra. You, uh, buy, uh, you, you uh, pay uh, in advance, you are given some discount, you pay in a uh, staggered fashion, you are charged something else. Now, apart from the financial component of these uh, or financial justification of these delays, there are places where uh, one simply is using incentives and punishments as a or incentives and fines as a means of moderating human behavior. Now, any uh, system, uh, any financial system, any uh, any any system or any corporation or any government or any collective that works would like to have some uh, incentives to encourage the behavior it expects and some disincentives to discourage the behavior that it doesn't want. We have prisons to put in people who have violated the law. We have uh, awards uh, uh, and uh, uh, glory for people who follow the uh, expected uh, behaviors, right? So, these are very preliminary uh, forms of a carrot and stick policy. You place a carrot for uh, a behavior that you would like to take place and you uh, punish with a stick when you do not want uh, uh, see that behavior to happen. Now, why is this? This is uh, fairly obvious. This seems to be uh, uh, a very uh, fundamental um, building block of the world order we are in today. Why am I talking about this? Well, now to bring in with this contrast, which we call 
uh, which is called the Nishkam Karma. Now, Nishkam Karma is a notion that is explicated in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is a part of the Mahabharat, and uh, uh, the Bhagavad Gita consists of very dense philosophical doctrines. Uh, it is a religious text also, and it is a philosophical text too. Now, uh, extracting the philosophical component about this notion of Nishkam Karma, which is a very uh, a terse, dense uh, philosophical and ethical notion, uh, discussed in uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita, which also draws its analogies in the western tradition to Kant's notion of, Immanuel Kant's notion of ethics of, uh, duty ethics of rigorism. Now, uh, Nishkam Karma on the other hand is saying, that well, incentives do not affect an action. Now, wait, does not that seem to be strange, that uh, 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 actions, which are detached with the consequences. Let us take a look at, what uh, 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 Nishkam Karma would actually mean. Well, Nishkam Karma would mean, if you like take a look at the screen, it means, actions done without any attachment. that is, without any conscious in intention of achieving something. Without any conscious intention of achieving something. I am grateful to uh, Kedarnath Tiwari, uh, for the formulation of uh, Nishkam Karma, as uh, written on the screen. Now, without any attachment, when we mean that there is no attachment, uh, or any conscious achieve, uh, intention of achieving something, what does it mean? Does it mean, goalless, that there is uh, no goal? Well, okay, let us look at it this way now. When this doctrine of Nishkama Karma is claiming that, well, one should not be attached, or Nishkama Karma is that which happens, when one is uh, detached with the uh, fruits of the action, and thereof in the action itself. Now, this is a continuation of the Karma theory, because when we talked about the Karma theory, we also critiqued it as being retributives, uh, or uh, retributivistic. That is, it was retributive. That is, whatever action I do, I will get a, uh, a result of that action, either in this life, or in the next life, or it becomes my uh, uh, moral baggage, which I need to carry. And uh, there is no loss of uh, morality in the moral universe. It is everything, uh, it, it is, it is uh, internally um, closed, or complete. Okay. Now, if this is the case with the theory of karma, that every good action that you do, yields results, and every moral action that you do, be it, be it uh, praiseworthy, or condemned worthy, yields its own result. Then, are we not in an infinite loop, or if of uh, actions, we are continuously spinning off, into creating good actions, or bad actions, and that is all that the loop is up to. Well, that is why Nishkam Karma is the, uh, uh, is, is uh, in continuation with the theory of karma, that well, that theory of karma is at a level, when we have, uh, if you would remember the definition of karma, that we talked about as, actions that have uh, uh, originate out of desire for certain fruits. So, when I am acting, let me give me an example. When I am acting, that uh, uh, I, uh, where say, say I, I am distributing, uh, uh, blankets to the poor, in winter. Say, I am acting with the desire, that the poor stay happy, or uh, that uh, shallower still, that some credit comes to me. And therefore, I am distributing blankets among the uh, downtrodden. Now, this is an action, which is tied up with a desire. At a shallower level, it is desire about my own gratification. At a slightly deeper level, it is about seeing others happy. 
So, each of these action has a moral merit and I uh, yield the fruit of this moral merit. Now, what in contrast could be a Nishkama Karma, that is actions which have transgressed the law of karma, which are no more uh, uh, following the theory of karma, because they have been liberated of attachment, Nish Kama, that is without Kama, Kama meaning in this sense attachment or passion. So, without passion and without attachment, the action done becomes Nish Kama Karma, and that does not accumulate moral merit or immoral uh, moral merit either way. So, this is what is uh, uh, known as uh, Nishkama Karma. So, let us look at some of the features of Nishkama Karma. Now, the first thing uh, we were talking about that is it goalless, is Nishkama Karma meant by random actions, because the first uh, uh, quality that we need to observe and uh, perhaps uh, find is that, what do we mean by without any conscious intention or without any attachment. So, uh, if we do not have an intention, having no intention, does it make the uh, action uh, random or goalless? Well, the answer of course, is no, it does not make the action random or goalless. Look at it uh, this way, that when we are acting. Of course, there is no goalless action possible. The very whole notion of action and agency denote goal driven behavior, right. However, uh, when we talk about uh, any sense of action or human agency. We mean goal oriented behavior. Action or human agency, they both determine goal oriented behavior. Now, in the terms of uh, Bhagavad Gita, the actions which are done without actions without raga or dvesha or without attachment are what is called as the called as Nishkam Karma. There is simply, it is nowhere claiming that there is no goal, that there are goals or there is action, and that there is a goal to human action, but that goal, there is no attachment towards that goal. So, that is fundamental about Nishkam Karma, that uh, we do have a goal. It is not random behavior, but there is a goal, and that goal is however, not, uh, not uh, uh, the source of attachment. So, when uh, uh, we are not attached to the fruits of action, and we still perform action, that would be called as a Nishkam Karma, that does not have a moral merit, that is transcended beyond moral merit, because it is no more uh, concerned whether with what is, uh, 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 what result, uh, whether it is able to yield the uh, intended result or not. Now, uh, let us say, now this is a point where perhaps most of us would be uh, a, a little or quite a bit skeptical that well, what do you mean? You mean that well, I have a goal and I act towards the goal and I do not or do attain the goal and I am indifferent to the goal wait, this does not seem to be working. I, why would I do something, if I am not attached towards the uh, consequence or the goal attained by that action. Now, let us look at it this way. First, because many uh, of us would perhaps 
uh, find it psychologically impossible to act towards a goal, about which we are not attached. I mean, if I am running a race, and uh, I do not, uh, 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 I am not attached with winning, why would I be running a race? Well, let us try to get rid of the dominant world view today of action, that every action has to uh, be towards a uh, towards a goal and towards the consequences about which the agent is passionately attached and that itself serves as the motivation for action. Uh, there can be very very simple various examples. Say you are given uh, uh, you are a sales person and you are given a target to sell that you have to sell so many units uh, in a month and if you sell so many units you get a reward and if you do not get uh, if you are not able to sell the minimum number of units expected, then you are given a certain uh, disincentive. Now, that seems fair enough, that seems how the world works, that well, I am curious uh, or I am interested in what comes about and I am trying hard, so that if I attain what I wish to attain, I get the uh, rewards, I get the commission, I get the uh, if, uh, running race prize. Where is this possibility that I am acting without any attachment to the uh, results of the action? So why should I act after all, if I am not uh, uh, any way concerned with what is the result of the action? It is here that we need to take a step to the side, stretch our imaginations and imagine of a time, when this theory of Nishkama Karma was conceived, that this was a time, uh, with a different world order. And uh, this world order can, uh, is still being practiced, or can still be motivations for large, many number of people uh, around the world now. But it is not the dominant world order now. But look at it this way now, if you are uh, uh, taking a walk, if you are uh, running, for without a concern, whether you win or lose, you are detached with the result. First, how is this possible? How would you know that an action is, uh, uh, an action originating out of Nishkam Karm? First, you would know that when someone acts, or when an agent acts, without uh, uh, getting the, uh, without being worried about what uh, result the action leads to, whether it is attained or not attained, it does not matter. That is a typical example of Nishkam Karma, that the attainment or the failure of uh, the intended goal does not affect, does not affect the passions or does not affect the agent. Now, yes, that does seem um, a little, the triumph of winning and the, uh, and the uh, sorrow of defeat are taken away. And what else remains? Well, according to uh, this theory of uh, doctrine of Nishkam Karma, of course, a lot of it remains. And a lot of what remains, is that, that level of human behaviour and action, which is beyond this carrot and stick policy. That is something you would do, because it is your duty to do so. In the Kantian uh, perspective, it is called duty ethics, that well, when doing something only for the sake of doing it. That is, not giving it a, a, a poor effort, but not tying the effort with the consequence, or not tying your passions with the action. That you would do something, and uh, uh, unless until the results yielded, it does not matter. So, uh, this is basically what Nishkam Karma is uh, trying to say, that if you look at the uh, screen now. It says, renounce the fruit of the action. Well, when we renounce the fruit of the action, obvious question would come, why? And, I would like to answer it by saying that, well, well, renounce, it is not about me answering it, of course, sorry, but it is how the Nishkam Karma theory would say, because 
well the fruit of action is beyond the agent's control. So, this is very uh, significant uh, term or significant claim that well, why are we talking about to, to renounce the fruit of action. Now, let us look at it this way. When we talk about uh, renouncing the fruit of action, uh, what is our motivation? Why should one renounce the fruit of action? Well, that again brings upon the metaphysical claims that are tied up with the uh, ethical theory of Nishkam Karma. Is that, well, who, who is the one who does Nishkam Karma? The one who has risen beyond the law of karma, or the one who no more is attached to the action or the result of uh, yielded by the action. And why that person would then act? Well, that person acts as a sense of duty and uh, uh, acts from a sense of duty. And why does one uh, renounce the fruit of action? Here is where the metaphysical uh, uh, influence of uh, uh, of, of, of uh, the Bhagavad Gita in general uh, can be uh, understood, when we talk about that well. It is um, the, the uh, uh, gap or that between the fruit and the action, which is hinted at. That the uh, fruit of the action does not necessarily follow from the uh, action itself and that is what is meant by, uh, uh, that is what is the reason, why there is seems to be a gap between uh, the action and the fruit of the action. So, as long as we understand or we take into note that the fruit of the action does not follow from our action, then what does it follow from? Well, of course, definitely it follows from the uh, uh, in the karmic influence, it all follows from the uh, uh, existence of God or uh, 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 the cosmic world order, from which the uh, fruits follow into uh, fruits follow from the action. So there is a gap between the fruits and the action, and this requires a uh, further goes ahead to hint a surrender to the uh, notion of uh, God. So nishkam karma says, uh, asks us to renounce uh, our interest in the fruit, because it finds a gap between the fruit and the action. And that gap is influenced by uh, cosmic world order or uh, the God or cosmos and therefore, it asks us to surrender, that we are only a part of the consequence that occurs. We can do our action and not uh, claim the results coming from this action. So, this in brief puts up uh, uh, what we mean by Nishkama Karma and why it says that the fruit of action is beyond the agent's control.